you evolved the GSPS 2030, wherein you defined the uh, mechanized forces modernization strategy. Kindly explain, Ashok, please. Yes, sir. So uh, you're right, sir. Uh, as you met forces, I felt uh, that you know we must look at mechanized forces as one entity, and we must have a long-term perspective of fleet management from a womb to tomb concept, and also evolve a GSPS, which uh, we evolved in 2017 for 15 years, so it became GSPS 2032. And we evolved both these things, GSPS 2032, uh, long-term fleet management perspective. And the third uh, document which we uh, uh, evolved was an upgradation philosophy uh, because it, it required a clarity of mind and uh, institutionalized approach. And all these three things we got it uh, approved uh, at the Army Headquarters at BS, BSCPC uh, meetings. And uh, it, it was put into place as a holistic, realistic, and a time sensitive uh, plan and a vision for the mechanized forces. Why? Because I felt we were still talking of firepower, mobility, protection. You know, today, we have to move to lethality, maneuverability or agility, survivability, sustainability, connectivity. C5 ISR, some people have now graduated to talk on C7 IS, uh, ISR, and multi role adaptability. So, well, not only tank design, but tank men have to look at all these things. So, therefore, I, I looked at uh, long term fleet management, which I mentioned to you is, is, is a concept which is from whom to do. What does it mean? It has two aspects. One is you have to enhance the present force capability. Simultaneously, you have to enable the future force, force, capability, force capability. And therefore, I coined a term called Sudro. It had a catch in it also to tell people to learn or Sudro. So what does this acronym uh, Sudro stand for. It stood for S stood for sustain, U for upgrade, D for develop new capabilities, R for re replace obsolete equipment in time, and O for orient to indigenous solution. So that was Sudro as a concept of uh, long term fleet management. And within this, for the current fleet, we lay down what are the upgrades that we require for Ajay, B-72, a lot of that, you are seeing it happen. What are the upgrades required for BMP-2? And upgrades means upgrade T-72 to get as close to T-90. Upgrade T-90 to get as close as what we envision the FRC. Upgrade BMP-2 to get as close to the capability of FIC because all these new platforms are going to take place and that gap cannot cannot be left uh, vacant. It has to be upgraded to capabilities and for any any uh, in the Indian context uh, these uh, delays taking place. So we looked at that. We looked at uh, you know no more of the heavy tanks. We looked at uh, light tanks. Uh, we looked at uh, modernization of fleet for the northern borders. We looked at uh, refurbishment and orient uh, and reorientation for, uh, uh, you know, uh, for future roles. Now, what do I mean by refurbishment? I said, look, you got so many of these T-72s which are going to be replaced by FR. What are you going to do with this? You can't just throw it up. So you can refurbish, you can do that. And remove the turret. And today we have multiple options of power power. You can put uh, drone uh, launch systems. You can run uh, 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 electronic warfare pad. 
so we have to look at an innovative approach also which is realistic so that you don't start coming just by way and then you have to look at future platforms uh, summit in frcb ficb light tank wheeled apc uh, uh, after the btrs uh, left there was nothing and we have to look at a uh, concept of commonality of platforms we have to look at technology enablement i have been professing even at that time that we must have an ai task force from mechanized forces because i think ai has both from operation operational logistics and technology uh, uh, enhancement of a time it has great potential great potential i'm i'm absolutely very very convinced of that so all these things we have to look at with good and even when you look at the future force capability that look at combined uh, uh, combat arm logistics and infrastructure garages training uh, aggregates we have to look at uh, field firing modernization so a holistic approach is is, is something that we want so we that is what the long term fleet management in general spoke about now what are the contours of the modernization strategy which also is part of the gsps firstly i said that we got such a large fleet that you are aware of the mechanized fleet so we have to have a tiered modernization you can't do everything and today when you are having a uh, equipment there so maybe where Certain areas require a particular threat technology. You may require uh, as uh, fitment and upgradation that. Second is accept the spiral uh, approach to technology induction. You know, don't wait for the very best to come. Wait for something which is available today, better than what you have, and with a proviso that how is this going to be upgraded in the next ten years, so that. You are not always running behind technology, but you are adopting a spiral approach. Then prioritize on value, vulnerability, and risk. And you require all technology, but what is going to give you your value in terms of your weapon effectiveness index? What is going to address your present vulnerabilities that you had against, have against the threat? Let's say active protection system is important. Today, uh, when the threats are seen, so we need to focus on that. And what are risks we are going to risk in terms of? Can I delay this technology or this capability for another five years because it it does not have that sort of an adverse impact immediately? So you take a risk in terms of temporal. And the reality is also you have to take cost-informed decisions. You know what the uh, new schemes today? How much money you got? That's reality. You can't be fighting that. We may keep having a 2.5, 3 percent of GDP. Yes, we must continue to uh, build up our case and call for that. Also, be, improve our spending capability. But then, till that time, we have to take cost-informed decisions. We also have, and that thing I have mentioned, we have to balance modernization, sustain, sustenance, and expansion. You can't take all these three things going in the in, in the budgetary envelope. So expansion, sustenance, and modernization has to take place. And if I were to say priority one is sustenance, because if you can't sustain, then what are you modernizing uh, for? Uh, and therefore, also look at something which uh, we tend to overlook. What is the cost benefit of sustaining legacy equipment? If today I have to spend 15 crores. For an equipment which is going to last for only next five to seven years after, you know, overall or after a, a MR three, and I envision that the next five to seven or ten years I'm going to replace it, is the cost benefit uh, of upgrading that or replacing that better? So, uh, cost benefit of sustaining legacy equipment is important. Because we have a tendency, if we don't understand equipment uh, orientation, to continue to say, uh, we don't require new platform. Let's go cartero, cartero. Now, there is a limit to, to a capability of a, uh, to take on a tank because upgradation has many factors, which I'll talk of later if you permit. And lastly, engineering solution is the way. So, sir, uh, this is how I looked at the key essence of uh, 
you know, GSPS and uh, where I spoke of the employment uh, scenarios, the threat scenarios, which I spoke in the question one itself, and also uh, the need for uh, a Sudro plan. Thank you very much for that, uh, Ashok. Uh, you covered a large area and a lot of uh, futuristic aspects you brought out. Good food for thought. So uh, you talked about technology from that. The question arises that uh, mechanized forces uh, are the harbinger of uh, uh, new technology. Could you elucidate uh, on that? You sort of hinted at that in uh, your previous answer. Ashok, please. Sure, sir. Uh... So uh, what I, I've already told you that we need to look uh, gadget from fire power protection uh, and uh, you know uh, mobility to greater aspects. Uh, I won't read that of uh, agility, lethality, survivability, connectivity, uh, sustainability, uh, modularity. But what are the technology? vectors that we should be talking about. So today we're talking about lethality and advanced fire control systems, where we look at high performance guns, multi-role ammunition, we're talking about uh, cannon launch, uh, guided missiles, next generation beyond light of line of sight system, uh, precision uh, autonomous, no, uh, semi-autonomous systems. So uh, lethality is Still the core, because if you are lethal, you will survive. So your lethality is very important, I would say. Second, I would say, is multi-layered survivability and countermeasure. In fact, I would have a written a uh, paper on this of survivability, which is, and I have called it integrated balance survivability. Uh, is the key today. So it's not only based on the equipment, based on training, it's based on tactics as per terrain. Uh, but as far as technology is concerned, the vehicle cellar, the stealth technology, the new configuration active protection systems, the new configuration armor arrays, ERA panels, light ERA panels, you are aware that came up in that time when we were in, still in service and panels which are better than any other important panels that start in digits in digits We have to look at signature management today, sir. Uh, vehicles, silhouette, shape, outer surface, material, uh, new co uh, cooling for survivability and coating. Uh, you've seen the sort of thermal signatures today, uh, these equipment here. So the signature management is of here. Enhanced agility and maneuverability, which I Spoke of is uh, better suspension systems so you can fire on the move, uh, modular uh, engines uh, which are capable of being upgraded uh, in part as per the requirement. Uh, we have to start talking and looking at and uh, investing in uh, transportability, uh, uh, be it in the aircraft, weight and dimension constraints, or otherwise bridges uh, and terrain that we're talking about. We have to look at common chassis design and modular approach for better logistics and uh, development cost advantage. We have to look at today increasingly on info management and situational awareness. Uh, and uh, of course, we have to look at reduced uh, logistic requirement to sustainability to uh, bring out a high uh, mean time between failures, uh, a life cycle, sustenance concept, a proactive approach to where we can predict the requirement of MEOs and cater for them. Uh, and uh, even the fault finding uh, should be foolproof uh, on the spot and a modular uh, replacements uh, to, to do that. So uh, these are technology vector, but what is the philosophy that I evolved? Again, it was part of the GSPS also. Technology induction philosophy, I call it. I said in, uh, technology induction must adopt a parallel approach in three levels. I said level one is an 
immediate operational need and time criticality, which is based on mature technology, which is existing and emphasizing indigenization and integration need in a time sensitive way. So we need to look at level one, which you can do it fast, along with the spiral uh, upgradation in there. Level two, I said, is desired capabilities that we must envision today in terms of emerging technologies, maybe five to 10 years from now, uh, what are the upgrades? What are the next system uh, uh, requirement? And thus, invest with the scientific community, with the academic community, uh, R and D focus to make it, which may be presently in a tabletop, to a prototype, to a to a post capability, uh, sort of a emerging uh, technology. So that is level two. Uh, and level three, I said, is loop ahead technology for generation after next AFP. So 10 years plus, uh, where you have to focus on science and technology, more in the academic sphere, which may not be even at the tabletop uh, right now. But what I'm trying to say is all these three levels have to be envisioned, you know, uh, both from technology and for empowering the human uh, who's going to operate that. And if that has to take place, this has to be done today for the next 15, 20, 30 years. You can do a mid-course correction every two years, every five years. But then someone has to think today so that you're not stuck suddenly that tomorrow you want, oh, this technology has come, let's put it in a tank. And then you realize you put up a tank, you have not changed your tactics, you have not trained your tank men. What the hell is this technology you're talking about? It's, 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 it's not that you put it off the cuff. There certain principles also, cardinal principles of technology. One is, when you look at technology, again, I mentioned this in my objective, the concept of product to evolution, time cycle has to be really understood. You know, so the uh, concept of product uh, uh, time cycle has to be aligned to the technology evolution cycle, so that's the one. Integration and transition, integration with, uh, uh, with the human uh, and with the other systems and transition of technology from tabletop modeling to prototype to war fighting has to be done. So you have to use technology in the manufacturing process also when you do that. The multi-role adaptability. And you must have, as you buy technology, you must look at spare backup. You must have logistics of that technology. You must look at training aid, life cycle sustenance. You have to look at when you, before even the, the if technology comes in and the equipment comes in, you have to be very clear what is the MR1, MR2, that norm that you're going to look at, OS1, OS2, what you're going to look at, where is it going to be done, what are the requirements that it has in terms of tools, in terms of specialization, in terms of training, in terms of simulators. So uh, logistics and uh, tactical training, uh, both for the operational man and for the logistic man for technology integration uh, is a must. So over to you, sir. Uh, thank you for that, Ashok. Uh, so in your you know previous answers, you had uh, touched upon uh, this aspect of uh, uh, that uh, mechanized forces warrant a long-term fleet management perspective. Uh, so what was your upgradation philosophy? Though you have touched upon it, maybe you can give it in a combined manner here. Uh, Ashok, please. Okay, sir. Yes. Uh, this was a separate uh, paper uh, we looked at uh, of the upgradation of philosophy and uh, a roadmap. So, uh, firstly, we said let's uh, classify the upgrades. There's a product upgrade. You've got a sighting system you want to upgrade as uh, TI, so you want to upgrade as focal plane area. 
FPA. There's a system upgrade that you want to upgrade, say, a fire control system, a digital uh, computer. You want to upgrade uh, a system in a modular approach. And then there is a platform upgrade. We want major things like a engine to be changed, the gun systems to be changed, or multiple upgrades to be done as a platform upgrade. So you have to classify them. I said, first you classify them, number one. Then I said, there are certain principles for upgradation, which are to be uh, So what are the uh, principles uh, that? First thing is, the upgrade must be driven by the operational need and impact in a proactive manner, uh, rather than an upgrade available, and let's put it. We must see that how does it enhance our operation capability, and what will be its impact uh, involved. Second, it must have a minimum downtime. So if you're going to do uh, uh, let's say uh, uh, PFCS or any other such system, uh, you're going to upgrade the entire fleet. You would require, as far as possible, these updations to be done in the field so that you don't start moving equipment back and wasting time and equipment non availability being there uh, as a field formation. So, you upgrade has to be as far forward as possible. And to cut down on time, it has to have a multi-point addresses, not just one team. We started with one team, we finally went into, uh, I think, 12 teams. So that we cut down on uh, the entire capability when look at uh, holistically for all formations. Uh, and I told you, as far as for, uh, forward for combat units, uh, uh, units if not, then field workshop, if not the medium repair workshop, if not the, the base workshop, otherwise the OEM. So that's the order of priority that it must. Uh, second upgrade, we sometimes just look at an upgrade. OK, this is providing me capabilities. But the key aspect which I realized, and we had some issues also, which uh, came as lessons to us, that Upgrade, the greatest challenge is integration into the system. Integration in terms of space management, in terms of power management, in terms of interference to the other systems, electronic, EMI, EMI EMC system. And therefore, therefore, this integration and uh, upgradation has to be looked holistically with the OEM, original equipment manufacturer, integrated to it because he has made the system. He may not be doing the upgrade. So it's not only even if a private sector is doing the upgrade, he has to be integrated so that the understanding of the system with the upgrade and the integration is there. And the warfighter does not face problems after six months of the integration and something heating up, something not working as well and uh, all that. Training, both, and technology backup of the upgrades have to be envisioned at that time. And of course, cost benefit and uh, balance life. So these are the principles we laid down for that. And we said, ideally, it should be upgrade intervention norms should be as a field workshop or field environment. Uh, otherwise, during MR, core zone workshop, and uh, during overall, the uh, base workshop. So, product, up room, uh, product uh, upgrade uh, immediately at field workshop. System upgrade maybe at uh, field workshop uh, also, or uh, uh, thing at okay. MR. Again, major system upgrade to be taken there. And platform upgrade to be done at base workshop or at the uh, OEM. So we looked at uh, all these things, and that's how we evolved a major upgradation philosophy.
besides that we also look at uh, you know beyond the upgrades and holistically as a macfire one thing which i always felt and uh, i felt during exercises and we when we as uh, a psycho commander when i planning for operation and looked at the logistics in a very serious manner and our war stamina studies uh, which we did that we need a proactive approach tomorrow i need to be saying that if my mission is going to be 200 kilometers 150 kilometers 50 kilometers i know my equipment i should be able to predict today that after 30 kilometers i require this mus or before i launch if it's a matter of 50 kilometers i need to change it today if there is an intervention norm which is going to come up after so much time i might as well do it now when i'm getting a little one up period if possible so a proactive approach today technology allows you to say that what is the mu requirement for various missions for what equipment and you can just do it cross i i have seen some russians carrying a and her computer and says okay this time also this is going to fall vacant so move it from here to here and he's showing me here sitting in india he's telling me uh, on his palm top uh, computer that how he is managing the equipment flow to various formations as per the requirement which is uh, coming up in a proactive and predictive manner second thing i think we need to look at today a spurt capability being tested by the oem i have been saying this to the mod when i was advised to them also if if a spurt capability means or a surge capability i mean that if today the oem is making tanks that and they 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 shut off after 8 hours or 12 hours whatever let them work for 72 hours and let's see what is the enhancement in production Uh, for a more time this thing so the surge or spurt capability uh, must be tested ai task force must come up uh, management strategy has broken off uh, priority for northern borders has uh, 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 broken off we need to supplement manned and unmanned systems and optimize man machine mix uh, broken off so therefore uh, i think putting all this in this context uh and uh, now hand over back to you putting all this in context uh, thank you very much uh, janesh vane uh, it's been an absolute pleasure listening to you and uh, now on behalf of the viewers and the subscribers we thank you for coming on our platform and with that, that viewers we come to uh, the end of this very partic- this particular interaction we look forward to bringing more such uh, persona personas and personalities on our platform thank you very much for uh, listening jai hind